In this video, I want to talk about being a creator that you are without any excuses and being able to create when you want to create rather than only when you feel inspired. So I am now, I've completed four months of building my brand new side business, The Secret Project, that nobody here knows what it is, but I will reveal one day. And I've been learning again what it means to be consistent and what it means to um, have faith, keep the faith about a business that's going to happen down the road. But really, just in the first year, I'm creating content and growing an audience. And that's really what you know a lot of you are learning too. You're just starting, some of you are just starting out, or maybe you're, you're at some point in your business where you're creating something new. And you've got to keep the faith that it's going to work, right? So that's where I am right now. So I can hopefully relate to you better. Um, later on, I'm going to post an article uh, connected to this video, which will give more details on what I'm learning now from, from after four months of doing this. But let me just give you a couple of the, the key lessons. Um, one of them is no excuses, okay? So... The reason why this is so important is because something that is a sign, uh, something that's a sign for somebody to say, well, today is not the day to, to create. Today is not the day to do what I planned. For somebody else, it's an excuse. And it, you have to decide what that means for you. So that's why this is such a tricky lesson to learn. Um, so for example, today I'm not in a very good spot. I didn't get much sleep last night. In fact, I think I had a conscious out-of-body experience last night. That's, that's for another video. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I didn't sleep so well. And then this morning I posted something in a, in a, in a group I'm part of that I think was uh, kind of judgmental to, to some people. And you know, a lot of people hated it. And so uh, that was that was kind of shocking to me. So I don't think I'm in the, the right mindset today. Uh, the right brain brain chemistry is not quite working well. Um, but guess what? I'm here. I could have made an excuse as oh, I'm not feeling up for it today. Uh, it just doesn't feel like it today. Not going to be a very good video. But I'm here anyway. And I'll just make a bad video. If I can't make a good video, I'll make a bad video. And that is really one of the secrets to my success. I just do what I plan the best that I can. And if it's going to be bad, it's going to be bad. But at least I showed up, right? And I'm sorry that this is going to be a bad video, right? Um, but that's what, that's, you know, I, I uh, used to know somebody who, I mean, she, she actually told me this herself, that whenever she wanted to focus on creating something like she focused on working on her purpose. There was always some family tragedy that took her away from working on her purpose and working on creating. And, and she saw the pattern and she even admitted to me that, yeah, that is, it's a pattern. I want to focus on cre creating and work, work on my purposeful business, but then family tragedy happens. A relative dies. Some, someone needs help in my family and I have to go and help them and I can't do my business. I can't create. It's, that's, that's what she said. I, I didn't say it for her. She said it herself. And I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. And I, and I believe her. You know, I, I believe that our, our, our human minds are so powerful, are so powerful that we are able to create tragedy in our life in order to give us a powerful enough reason to stop working on our purpose, working on our business, working on our creation, creativity, so that we can attend to this tragedy. Now, I know that sounds cold and, and I'm probably, again, not in the brain, right brain chemistry today to, to be compassionate, but, um, but it's, not, it's not so much cold as it is, I, I'm actually, a, I, I'm a huge believer in the power of your mind. I believe you have such a powerful mind that you can create situations that take you away from your purpose and your creativity because you're scared. When it comes to your own purpose, when it comes to fulfilling it and creating something that really matters to you deeply, you're scared. 
And of course you're right to be scared because you can screw it up. It's your purpose. So you think you can screw it up. But one of the other secrets of my success, if you can call it that, is that I've come to realize that no matter what I do, I cannot screw up my purpose. No matter what I do, I cannot screw up my business if I keep showing up. That's the one thing that will always make up for any mistakes that I make. That's the consistency of showing up is the savior of any mistakes and of any bad videos, bad blog posts, bad launches, bad outreaches, bad message, whatever, whatever bad, it doesn't matter. If I consistently show up, it will always solve the problem. It will always eventually make up for it. So the question is whether you are willing to do that, whether you're willing to commit to it. So um, this past month, uh, I could have made a lot of excuses for showing up in my side business, which I do only two hours a week. So it's, it's easy to say no to that. Two hours a week, I, you know, I'll just do it next week. You know, No, I showed up. Uh, I had to go travel uh, to help my mom. She just recently was injured. I had to travel. And during that week of travel, I could have said, forget the two hours of working on my side business. I'm traveling. It's helping my mom. It's too, too much you know, family stuff right now. But no, I said boundaries. You know, I set boundaries with my mom and I said, all right, hey, I got to, I got to go work on this thing and I'm, I'll be back. It's two hours. You know, I can, I can do that. You know, it doesn't matter how much your family needs you. You can carve out two hours a week to work on your side business. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay. I also got food poisoning this past month and that, that, that took me out for about a week. I mean, I wasn't bedridden for a week. Even if I was bedridden, I'm still, I would still carve out the two hours to work on my thing. But I was certainly not feeling myself for a week. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't fun. And, uh, but I still, did, I still did my work. I still did my work. I still showed up. Um, let's see. What else happened to me this week? Oh, also this month I decided to change the name of my business, my, side, you know, my new side business, which you don't know what the name is. The original name I was always not so sure about. But even when I was not so sure, I still went full force, full force into creating content, buying, you know, by this point, I've spent about $700 on Facebook ads in the last four months, $700 in four months, um, more than that now. I think it's closer to 800 now uh, in four months. Um, even though I wasn't sure about the name, I don't care. I don't care if the name's not right because I know I can always change the name later. So you still, it doesn't matter if your website's not done, the name's not right, you still create content, you still build an audience. Because when it's time to change the name, it just creates another opportunity for you to get more, uh, get, your, get your business more noticed. Hey, you got a better name now, great, right? So that's what I did this past month. I changed the business name to something that is better than, I, than it was before. And I might still change it in the future. My brand might still completely change, but I don't, let that stop me from building an audience and creating content. That's the number one job in the beginning of your business. It's never too early. I don't even know what my product's gonna be. And my product could be something completely different than what I have in mind right now, but I am still building an audience, you see. You don't give up on that. You don't say, well, let me wait until I've got everything clear. No, I'm not clear. The name wasn't even clear until now. I mean, a name might still change. So I had a hard time this month because when I tried to change the name of my, of my Facebook page, Facebook declined. Facebook says, no, you can't change your name. The name you want now, it's too different from the name you had started with. And I already built an audience, spent $800 building an audience, and now they won't let me change the name. So what could I do? Could I, you know, while I was, I appealed the name change, I, you know, and that's gonna take you know, a, few, a, a week or two to, to figure it out. So even though the name change might not happen, right, this, during this past month, this is what I experienced, I still continue my content rhythm. I don't let any excuses stop me. And I want you to have that same mindset. No excuses, none. Doesn't matter if family tragedy happens, doesn't matter if you get sick, doesn't matter if your name is not gonna be accepted by Facebook, no excuses, you see you still build an audience. You still build an audience. Even though the brand might completely change and the audience go, what, it's a new brand? 
yes, you still create content and you still buy ads and you still build an audience. Now, so what, let me tell you what happened. I tried the name change, they declined it, I appealed it, they declined it again. So this is now two weeks into the, the attempted name change. Now what I do is I, I figure it out, no excuses, right? So I, I said, okay, I could abandon this page with $800 of spending on Facebook ads. I could abandon the page and start a brand new page and still be, but still, even if I start a brand new page, I could still you know, advertise to my old audience and say, hey, I'm over here now. That's fine. See, no excuses. You just keep going. Uh, but here's what I did. I tried to be creative. Like, okay, what can I do differently now? Okay. Uh, what I did was I then contacted Facebook ad, ads support because I've spent all those, I spent $800 on Facebook ads, right? So I contacted Facebook ads support team, which you can do. If you spend money on Facebook ads, you can contact the Facebook ad support team. And I said, hey, listen, you know, I really want to change the name because, you know, Facebook, the Facebook algorithm thinks it's too different. But let me explain to you why it's not actually that different. It really has a similar meaning. It just sounds very different, but it's a similar meaning. And I want to spend a lot more money on Facebook ads. Will you consider the name helping me out with the name change? And they did. I had to follow up one more time with the Facebook ads team. So basically, four more, you know, four total contacts. Two with just the Facebook page team, and two with the Facebook ads team. And they finally let my let me change the name. I explained it to them. I told them how much money I've spent, and I'm going to spend more money. And they let me change the name. So anyway, no excuses, right? No excuses, no matter what. Oh, another another thing was I was using Focusmate, which I love. I still use Focusmate all the time. And uh, during that, during that, during the past month, I had I was working on my side business. And during that, during that time, two of my Focusmate sessions canceled last minute. So I wouldn't, I wasn't gonna have some accountability. And I could say, ah, you know what? I scheduled to work on my business, but focus me sessions canceled, so I'm not going to work on it anymore. No excuses. Show up anyway, even without a focus mate partner there. I'm still going to show up and do my do my own work. No excuses, none. And and here's what happens when you live a life of no excuses. You'll find that your life, the universe, will shape itself to your purpose. Your unit, when you decide no excuses and when you demonstrate to the universe that you don't make any excuses, you show up. Like, for example, this one, I, right now I shouldn't be making a video. I didn't get enough sleep. I'm kind of loopy right now. But I'm still here. I'm still making the video. I'm going to tell you a couple of benefits of that. One, the universe will shape itself to allow you to fulfill your purpose, to allow you to do your creative work. Family tragedy, you know, getting sick, doesn't matter. The universe will say, you know what, since you're not giving that any energy, you're not putting any drama to it. Yeah, you can take care of family tragedy. Yeah, you'll take care of yourself, your health or whatever, but you're not giving any drama to it. You're not letting it be an excuse. So I'm going to support you in doing your work. That's what the universe does. And I say universe, I mean your mind, however you want to say it. It's, it's your mind is really the, 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 the universe, right? Because you create your reality. Whether you believe that as a spiritual principle or whether you believe that as an atheist, uh, secular principle it's true you create your reality you set your boundaries and other people will follow your boundaries other people will follow your boundaries that's the that's the reality of it and what's also weird is that if you if you make a no excuses life you will be healthier because once you have said sickness will not be an excuse anymore somehow suddenly your body will get sick less often it's the weirdest thing so I've had really good health for the past really, I would say probably four or five years since I've lived a no, no excuses life. I rarely get sick anymore. The food poisoning happened. It was a rare thing. I haven't gotten food poisoning for, for like 10 years or probably 20 years. But it, it happened because, you know, I had some bad sushi. Doesn't matter. I still kept working my schedule. And, you know, my body says my body probably healed more quickly than it would have anyway. No drama. Just don't give any drama to it. You're the one giving the drama to the to the excuses you're giving energy to it so oh i'm so tired oh i'm so sick oh my family needs me oh, blah, blah, blah. of course you're not going to do your work because you are the one giving all that energy to it you create the drama in your life i bring the drama to my videos <laughs> that's where i bring drama you know there's only one place i bring drama with my videos you know my writing that's where i put the drama my life oh, no drama bad things happen of course it's going to happen 
I don't give any drama to it. I don't give any energy. I just solve the problem. If it's, if it's within my control, I do my best to solve the problem calmly. No drama. No drama, right? And so your life becomes calmer. You become healthier. You get the work done. And the universe, basically, you've given a sign to the universe saying, oh, bad things happen not as an excuse to, to stop my work. Bad things happen as a test to whether I am going to persevere with my purpose. It's a, you can interpret either way, right? It's either a roadblock and roadblocks oh, redirect you from doing your work today. Or it's a roadblock. Let me figure out how to get around the roadblock so I can keep continuing doing my work that I planned. So, so that's, I'll just end the video by, by saying, you know, this is why I am able to create on schedule versus I hear from so many of you, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean to um, criticize you. Uh, and, and today I'll just say, I really am in a, in a more of a feisty mood today. So I'm probably less compassionate than, I'm, <laughs> than I usually am. But when I see you say that you only create when you're inspired, what I, what I hear from that is you only create when you feel like it, which means you don't create very often. You don't create very consistently. And you'll never create consistently when you tell me that you only do it when you're inspired. George, I can't make videos until I'm inspired. George, I, I can't write until I'm inspired. George, I can't do my marketing until I'm inspired. Fine, okay, all right, let's start with that. Then my question for you is, what are you going to do to make sure you are inspired on schedule? What are you going to practice to ensure that you are going to be inspired on demand? That's what I want you to do. Then that's what I do, right? I, am I inspired right now? Yes, I'm inspired because I forced myself to be inspired in front of you right now. Now, it's not forced. I'm not saying it's hustle and it's unpleasant. No, it's not unpleasant. It's just I made a decision. I decided that I'm going to be inspired right now. And of course, it's the video didn't start very inspired. But once I got into it, see, that's the key. This is the same with any personal change. The same process is this. I make a decision that it's going to be, I'm going to, I make a decision to do something that is outside my comfort zone. I go ahead and do it badly willing to do it badly and then once i start doing it badly 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 and then it gets easier and then it's going to be okay and then i i might even become inspired during the process maybe maybe not i'm not going to judge myself and i'm not going to judge the process i'm simply going to follow the process that i know works so create on a schedule not when you feel inspired okay this morning i was tired I was tired this morning, but I still wrote a whole blog post. That's about uh, 1,200 words, actually, approximately. Actually, how many words is it? I'm going to count. I'm going to do a word count right now because I have it in front of me. 1,400 word blog post when I was feeling tired this morning. It's not going to be a very good blog, good blog post because I'm probably rambly in the blog post because I'm tired. But I wrote anyway, and I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to publish it because today is a bad creative day, but it's still a creative day, right? And I still am building some muscles being a bad creator today. Still building it, still doing it. And by the way, I think it's bad, right? But you probably think it's pretty good. You probably get something from it. And you probably don't judge it as harshly as I judge it because we are always our harshest judge, right? If we allow ourselves to judge ourselves. I allow myself to judge myself. It's just that I don't allow myself to not publish. That's the difference. I say, yes, this is a bad video. Yes, this is a bad blog post, but I'm still going to publish. No excuses. It's on the schedule. I'm going to do it. Now, of course, being my own boss means I can change my schedule, but I don't change it. Here's the thing. I don't change it in the moment because I don't feel like it. That's not the time to change your schedule. You change your schedule a week or two or a month in advance. Maybe, you know, a day in advance is even kind of dangerous because then, yeah, I don't feel like doing it tomorrow. You could easily say that. But when you feel it, you know, like when you're planning your schedule, hopefully you're in a good mind. Well, even so, you could be a bad planner. That's okay too. But you see what I mean? You don't change your schedule in the moment when you don't feel like it. And here's something else I'm trying. 
and you're going to think I'm crazy, but I heard about the benefits of a cold plunge. This is when, you know, you, you know, well, benefits of a cold shower. Most of us don't, I don't even have a cold plunge. Like a, I don't have a spa or whatever, but so the way I do it is I, 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 when I, what I used to do when I go to take a shower is I used to let the water run until it got warm and then I stepped in the shower. That's what a lot of us do, right? Sounds normal. But I'm like, you know, it's wasting water. And two, I heard about the benefits of a cold plunge. So maybe if I get into the shower while it's still warming up, that's kind of like a cold plunge because then, then the water warms up and I'm, you know, I'm okay. So I gave it a try. I gave it a try. Um, I, um, yeah, so I, I basically uh, jumped into the shower when the water was still cold. And because I read about the benefits of it, like somehow your blood vessels change and you reduce inflammation. There's a lot of benefits to jumping into the water cold. So I did that. Regard so, and, and that, that's an extreme case because it's really, really physically uncomfortable. It's a shock to the system. It's, 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 a, it's not comfortable. It's not pleasant. But then the, here's the personal change process. You see something that's, you see an action that's beneficial. Okay, step one, you make a decision that I'm going to do the action that's beneficial, even if it's going to be uncomfortable at first. You do the action, it's uncomfortable at first, okay? And then step, next step, it gets easier. And then afterwards, you feel proud and you feel happy and you feel glad and you get the benefits for a long time. That's the pers positive personal change process versus the thing that will spiral you into hell is this. You do what's pleasant, knowing that it's going to have detriment later down the road. You do what's pleasant first, and then you have detriment for a long time. Versus you do what's unpleasant first, and you have benefits for a long time. That's really simply, you have a decision every single day with any habit. Eating, exercise, creating your business, it's the same decision. Pleasant first, regret later or unpleasant first, gladness for a long time. So it's, it's up to you to make that decision. And when you make an excuse, it's pleasantness first and regret later. You're making that choice. No excuses, unpleasant first, gladness later. Okay, gladness later. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and I guess I'll, that's probably, uh, and one more thing I'll, I'll say, um, if I if I can share with you a little bit about my personal spiritual beliefs, and please stop this video if you don't want to hear my personal spiritual beliefs. <laughs> um, I believe that uh, we chose to come into this life, that and after we leave, it's going to be celebration, gladness. Look at what you've learned. Look how brave you were coming into this. You know, Earth life is very painful. It's very challenging. It's like you are a super athlete of the spiritual world. Okay, like you are like one of the brave souls who decided to come to this difficult reality. You are one of the brave ones. And when you did it, it's like jumping into the cold shower. You're like, it's gonna be a shock, it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna be so glad afterwards. So you already made that choice to come here to this hard life with all the tragedies that you're gonna experience, that you have already experienced, all the trauma you've experienced and you will experience. You've already come here. So you might as well do it with purpose and you might as well do it without excuses, knowing that afterwards it's gonna be celebration, gladness, warmth, love all the time. It's hard to grow. It's hard to grow spiritually. It's, it's I should say, flip it around. It's much easier to grow spiritually while you're here in this physical body, in this hardship of earth life, very, it's much easier to grow spiritually here. When you get over there, when it's all love, it's all easy, it's all pleasantness all the time, it's really hard to grow your character, right? Because everything's so easy over there. Here it's not. So will you make a decision to face unpleasantness first so that you can have lots of gladness later? All right. So thanks for uh, joining me for this video. Robin, Tanya, Becky, Alejandra, Miriam, Yule, Captain, uh, Jill, thanks for hanging out today. And um, 
Yeah. Thanks for your comments, everybody. Uh, Yul says, this is very encouraging. I'm now building my business after hours because I had to go back to a formal employment, but I'm clear on why I'm doing it. Yul, I'm proud of you. There is nothing wrong about going back to full employment. I'm actually glad you did so that you can build your business without financial pressure. Too many people try to build a business with so much financial pressure and it's hard because you, you will make inauthentic decisions. It's so easy to manipulate, to deceive other people, to buying your thing because you're desperate for money. So many people do that. But when you have a financial cushion, then you can really build an authentic business. You know, so kudos to you and I'm proud of you. Doesn't matter what kind of job you, you need to get, get the job. And then so you can be, uh, anyway. So thanks for being here. I hope this is beneficial for you. I wish for you a no excuses life. Whatever your vision is, you can absolutely achieve it, but it's up to you. It's up to you whether you make excuses every day or not. All right. And I, I know this might be shocking to you. You're like, what, what are you, Gary Vaynerchuk here? No, I'm not. I actually respect him a great deal, but I would rather frame it as this. Not a no excuses life because you got to hustle. You got to pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. You got to be like, ah, oh, bite the bullet. No, I'm not that kind of no excuses. No excuses because it grows your soul. No excuses because that's why you're here in this life. You're here for courage. You are here for, you know, perseverance. That's why you're here. You know, and the, and the, the excuses in front of you just allow you to say, no, I'm going to pursue my purpose, my God-given purpose. What I feel, if you feel it's your divine purpose, then don't make any excuses. God is saying, right? The universe is saying, will you do this? I'm going to give you a test. Here's a tragedy. Here's your sickness. Here's your tiredness today. Here's your lack of inspiration. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to be courageous? Are you going to be, no, no, my purpose is more important than my tiredness. My purpose is more important than my lack of inspiration. Be purpose-driven. Be purpose-driven, my friends. All right, go for it.